Uh, good evening, everybody. So the last time I was in this room, I realized it was about 38 years ago when I was doing my own PhD in composition. So thank you so much for inviting me to come back here kind of three decades later. Um, <coughs> so this is my first year as judge for the Sound Prize, and I have been absolutely astounded by the range and virtuosity of all the work submitted at a time when we are raging against the impact that austerity is having on both education and the arts internationally. It is heartening, to say the least, to witness the undaunted passion of our student composers, many of whom are already forging futures uh, in the professional world. The diversity of the entries is remarkable. The expressive and stylistic range, their source materials, the technical methodologies of sound creation and manipulation, the use of a huge variety of acoustic, electronic, pre-recorded live and spoken sounds explored with such imagination and proficiency. So it really was a challenge to decide even on a long list from so many entries that combined such oral impact, expertise, and indeed clarity of philosophy, and harder still to decide on the shortlist. One of the great virtues of this particular prize is that the decision is finally made by specialists in the three fields of visual, text, and sound art, a collaboration that reflects and celebrates the inspirational interconnectedness of the disciplines. So I'm going to introduce to you the first of our shortlisted composers, and this is David De La Haye, whose work is entitled Plant-Based Patterns. So David's currently studying uh, for his PhD at Newcastle University, and alongside his work as a composer, he's known also as a sound recordist, a bassist, and a music technician. And I'm going to quote just a little from uh, David's uh, website, and he says that his practice focuses on raising understanding of freshwater and marine environments through the creative exploration of underwater soundscapes. So David's going to tell you more about his piece in detail, but I wanted to say a few words about why this particular piece has been shortlisted. As you will hear in a moment, it creates an incredibly intricate and immersive sound world. It is beguilingly beautiful, but also at times it is edgy and surprising. For me, one of its great qualities is that it rewards and encourages, encourages different kinds of listening. A trained musical ear will hear its crafted correspondences between materials generated from a variety of live and recorded sources. They're manipulated, shaded, layered, and developed as if the music was constructed symphonically with themes and perhaps variations. But equally, it can also be enjoyed without any such intellectual understanding, purely as a sensuous experience, though certainly not one without its challenges. The combination of David's painterly sensuality and instrument technical control expresses his ecological message with great confidence. And it is this intertwining of the sonic and philosophical that really made this piece stand out. Modernism does not need to shout. Plant-based patterns, chatters, bubbles, scrapes, and rattles its passion for the future with quiet insistence. So David, I'd like to invite you to the stand. <laughs> Hey, good evening. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to try and condense. I thought I was speaking for five minutes, but I'm going to speak for one, and then we're going to hear some of the piece. So I'm going to try and condense everything into a one-minute thing here. So, um, yeah, as, as introduced, I, I'm interested in underwater recording. Um, this piece was made uh, possible through a commission with Sound of Music, which allowed me to explore the underwater sounds of Sunderland in the northeast of England. Um, I'm particularly interested in freshwater, so I, what I wanted to do for this was to move away from, from the docklands at the coast and through the rock pools and um, cross over the intertidal uh, mudflats and follow the river weir inland to record uh, the lakes and ponds and bogs uh, along the way. Um, I took these recordings and I sent them to uh, a trio of improvisers that I work with quite regularly up in the Northeast. That's, so that uh, comprises of cello, percussion, and uh, tenor sax. 
and I gave them anonymized files, so they didn't know what they were listening to. Um, I think I'm probably uh, okay to say that not many people have listened to freshwater underwater soundscapes before. Yeah, cool. So they interpreted those sounds, and what I found interesting was because the Northeast is so renowned as being an industrial area, um, and that kind of in those industrial repetitive rhythms that kind of uh, paved the way for the Futurist Manifesto and, this, and, and further on into electronica with the kind of trout rock and techno, this very incess incessant rhythm. But what I found interesting was exploring these, these uh, areas underwater revealed a, a really complex, um, very un unindustrial, very polyrhythmic comp and, and, and um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, complex, sorry, I've lost, uh, polyrhythms that have been created. And um, uh, yeah, I just thought it was a, it was a, a way of exploring that, that, that kind of post-industrial landscape, I suppose, from a, from a more naturalistic perspective. So the, um, I think it's probably best, that's probably my minute, isn't it? <laughs> so I'll just let you listen to the piece. This, um, the, the sounds you hear here are all made by aquatic plants. Um, and they make the sound as they photosynthesize in the sun, um, and they create these, yeah, these incredible rhythms that um, became the uh, the material for the composition. Thank you. 